The Dark Base Pro 900 Wide Edition from Be Quiet is finally here with a modular design for ultimate flexibility, Silent Wings 3 140mm PWM fans, outstanding water cooling support, and so much more. The Wide Edition is available in limited quantities, so catch it before it's gone. You can learn more by clicking the link in the description below. What's cracking, people? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all doing well. Today's video is going to be very haphazardly thrown together because I'm short on time. What else is new, Kyle? I know. So apologies in, in advance for that, but I still think the data that you're going to be seeing today is, is, uh, is going to excite you um, without giving too much away. So today marks the launch, as I'm sure most of you know, of the GTX 1070 Ti, a card that we didn't even really ask for or know was coming, but here it is in the flesh. Uh, I actually did a live unboxing of this particular model earlier this week. This is the EVGA Superclock Black Edition 1070 Ti. I did the uh, unboxing with Wifey Sauce. You guys can go ahead and check that out for more information on this card. But the long and short of it is that it's got a single eight pin connector, uh, no back plate, unfortunately, and it looks really nice. It's black and stuff. That's why it's the black edition, of course. You can SLI these guys up to two way and you can check out all the other specs either on their product page, which I'll link in the description below or on that unboxing video that I just mentioned. So. The question is, or first off, uh, there was a lot of speculation or doubt if you were even gonna be able to overclock uh, the 1070 Ti. And then later we found out, confirmed from Nvidia, that you can in fact manually overclock this card. And since it's really a stopgap between the GTX 1070 and 1080, the question I'm trying to answer today is, if you overclock the 1070 Ti, can it outperform or at least match the performance of a GTX 1080 running stock. So today we're gonna to be comparing it against this Founders Edition, which many of you guys might think is an unfair fight because we're running a reference cooler versus an add and board custom variant. But I just wanted to use this as a, as a reference point because it is sort of universal. The Founders Edition is everyone's familiar with this particular card. It hasn't really been touched by add and board partners, of course. So I think it'll still prove for an educational comparison. Now getting into some of the gritty details here, I was actually able to take our core clock speed up 135 megahertz. That was our offset that we got away with, with a 300 megahertz offset on the memory clock. It's actually not too bad. And uh, considering that this only has one disabled cluster uh, over the GTX 1080, I'm, I'm thinking that we can probably get away with this, guys. I think we can get pretty close, within 3%. Perhaps, this is my uh, estimate, this is my educated guess of what this card's able to achieve running stock. So I think that was a pretty good overclock. Uh, temperatures were also fantastic on this card. Granted, the ambient temperature in this office is pretty chilly as is, uh, around 18, 19 degrees C. Um, so actually under low, we were seeing no hotter than 70 C on this particular card, which is really, really nice. And of course, compare that to the 82 degrees Celsius that the Founders Edition 1080 will hit within seconds, pretty much, uh, of uh, sustaining a load. And that also goes to show that we can probably even get higher clock speeds uh, from an AB comparison testing with GPU boost, just accounting for the additional thermal headroom that this card has over something like a Founders Edition. So bear that in mind as well. As far as our testing hardware goes, we've got an 8700K running completely stock. I have not touched it whatsoever. That's being cooled by a Cooler Master Master Air Maker 8, uh, which is a air cooler, of course, a very nice tower indeed. That's going to be on top of a Z370 Aorus Gaming 7 motherboard from good old Gigabyte, paired with 16 gigs of Rip Jaws 5 DDR4, 3200 speed, a one terabyte SanDisk SSD Plus, and a Dark Power Pro 11 850 watt power supply using the Lian Li Open Air Test Bench. On a final note, I was using the latest Wickle drivers that are publicly available on the GeForce website for the GTX 1080 and the press drivers that Nvidia gave me for our 1070 Ti here. And I did run this card stock as well, so we can kind of see the performance jump uh, from, from doing a manual overclock. Let's go ahead and take a look at our benchmarks. So starting out with 3 Mark Fire Strike Extreme, we can see the GTX 1070 Ti when running stock pretty much gets beats out in both our graphic score and our overall score uh, from the GTX 1080 Founders Edition. But once we overclock, you can see we actually outperform the GTX 1080 now. And it's kind of interesting, we actually broke 10,000 points from overclocking our, our 1070 Ti, whereas our 1080 just fell short of that 10,000 mark. So that's actually a nice sign of, of what's to come. And I should have mentioned this earlier that I'm only running three titles here uh, but apart from 3D Mark, and that's just because I was again short on time, but fortunately I did test multiple resolutions at 1080p and 1440p. So starting with Ashes of the Singularity at 1080p, 
uh, we kind of see the same sort of situation we saw in the uh, fire strike test where 1070 Ti stock is really no match for the 1080. But as soon as we overclock that sucker, we're actually right neck and neck with a Founders Edition 1080, which is pretty exciting. We actually beat it out by 0.1 frames per second on average. And I should mention the reason why we only have average frame rates here and no frame times is because we're testing DirectX 12 with this particular title. And I don't currently have a monitoring software that supports DirectX 12. I know I'm way behind on that, uh, but still, this is a pretty telling benchmark here. If we move over to the same game at 1440p, we see very similar results with the 1070 Ti overclocked just barely, I mean, this, I would call this pretty much a match uh, between it, it and the GTX 1080 Founders Edition running stock. Again, the 1070 Ti falling slightly behind. Moving over to GTA 5 at 1080p, this is tested with very high to high settings. There's kind of a, a mixture because there's so many different uh, variables that you can configure in this game. No MSA, no MSAA was used, but you can see here we're actually running into sort of a CPU bottleneck because regardless of which GPU we're using or if we're overclocked on our 1070 Ti, we're pretty much getting the same results across the board. For some reason, the 1070 Ti running stock actually had slightly higher 1% and 0.1% lows. Not exactly sure why that is, but you can see here that we're pretty much getting 100 to 101 FPS on average across the board. And that pretty much continued over to 1440p. Serious CPU bottlenecking in this game because it's just so processor hungry. Uh, again, 100 to 101 FPS on average. Although the 1% and 0.1% lows bumped up from the, uh, from the lower resolution, which again, is kind of odd. Uh, that also goes to show though, uh, if you're playing a lot of GTA 5, just go with a 1070 over, or a 1070 Ti over a GTX 1080 because uh, it seems like the performance is pretty much the same. Now, finally, with Metro Last Light at 1080p, we're using max settings with no physics, and we're, again, seeing a very similar behavior. This is a repeatable result at this point where the 1070 Ti overclocked is, I would say, right on par with the GTX 1080 Founders Edition running at its default or stock frequencies uh, with the 1070 Ti running stock falling slightly behind. But that's a pretty nice overclock going from jumping from 135 to 144 FPS uh, from dialing in those offsets. And then finally at 1440p in the same game, uh, we're again seeing the 1070 Ti overclocked matchup with our 1080, which is great news. Naturally, our 1070 Ti running stock falling slightly behind. For the record, I would say the 1070 Ti, if you are planning to overclock, definitely holds the higher price to performance over the GTX 1080, at least the Founders Edition that we've tested out here. Well guys, we actually did it. We were able to overclock a GTX 1070 Ti, custom variant, mind you, into performing on par with the GTX 1080 Founders Edition. That's pretty cool. And whether or not you guys think that this card should even exist, because again, it is sort of a weird stopgap between the 1070 and 1080, at the end of the day, we're still getting performance on par with the 1080 for significantly less money. And I can't really find a way to argue with that right now. So that's pretty cool. Uh, guys, let me know your own thoughts. I, I would reckon that a higher tier 1070 Ti would even outperform a custom 1080 variant. So that's pretty exciting as well. Guys, let me know. Does this launch make sense to you? Are you excited about it? Do you think it's stupid? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, feel free to toss me a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Also, feel free to subscribe to the channel for more tech stuff coming at you really soon, guys. Thanks again, and I will see you in the next video.